Welcome back. I can't believe in all these years of shooting videos about new and interesting wines to try uh, that we haven't talked about Madeira yet. So here we are, let's do it today. Yeah, I can't, I can't believe it either. Um, so what exactly is Madeira? So it's like port wine, it's got added alcohol to it. Uh, it's about 20% alcohol, it's got quite the kick to it, and it's been around for almost 800 years. Um, it's really hard to kind of get your head around, and I think if anybody is familiar with it at all, it's probably cheap imitation stuff that's made in the state of New York. Have you ever seen Taylor's before? Yeah. My grandma used to like have a little nip of it at night before she went to bed. Now they don't <laughs> well. uh, But that's not real Madeira. The real Madeira actually comes from the island of Madeira, which is owned by Portugal. So in 1419, the Portuguese discover this island. How Madeira became the wine that it is today started in the 15th century when the island started to do trade with the outside world. Uh, they realized that the wine that they were making on the island wouldn't keep on the boats when they were shipping it. So the remedy to that was to add extra alcohol to the wine and it survived the distance. But the one major key that makes Madeira what it is is that it's actually cooked, like literally baked. Like in, not in an oven though, right? Or Today it is actually kind of cooked in an oven. I'll get to that in a minute. But originally uh, how they discovered this was an accident. It was uh, in exporting it around the world, it was being put on ships and in particular taken to trade posts in India. They found that when it had to travel through the uh, tropics and through a lot of the warmer climates that it actually got cooked. And uh, you would think normally that would destroy a wine, but because it has the added alcohol, it's essentially indestructible. It's kind of bulletproof. So it improved the wine. And they call this a Vino del Roda, which mean, means a round trip, like vino, uh, wine of the root. Okay. So a round trip. So for one round trip, you got this cooked wine that was uh, worth a certain amount of money, but they discovered that the more times they took it across the equator, the more they could charge. So, so wait, hold on. So you're telling me they would actually leave this on the ship? Yes, yeah. And they would like, and they would actually make several trips across the equator and back? Yes, yeah, that was a thing back in the day. Okay, so how would they mimic that kind of that process now, like how do they get that? Yeah, that they cook the wine yeah, yeah, right. without taking it yeah. on a ship around the world. Yeah, <laughs> across the equator several times. <laughs> uh, so for like mass produced wines, uh, they put them in stainless steel tanks that have like a jacket on the outside that heats it up. Uh, and they heat it at like 120 degrees for about 90 days, so almost three months. Uh, next level up, they put it in a lodge or a room that has a steam pipe in it and that mimics the heat and the humidity of the tropics. Oh, yeah, that's, okay. that's pretty effective and that creates some pretty high quality stuff. And the highest quality is what they call Cantairo. Uh, Cantairo is a lodge, so they just bake it essentially in the sun for years and years. Anywhere from uh, 20 years up to 100 years in some cases. 100 years? 100 years, yeah. How much is that expensive? Out of our price range. <laughs> and it's worth mentioning that in the 17th century, Madeira was very popular in Great Britain. And then in the 18th century, in the American colonies. As a matter of fact, it was uh, present at the signing of the Declaration of Independence. Really? Yes. I feel like that should be better known. Yeah, um, Thomas Jefferson, very notorious for poorly managing his finances. He died in debt, something in the order of like millions of dollars in today's money. And he spent a lot of it on French Bordeaux and also Madeira. And the rest you just wasted. <laughs> to this day, because the island is small, there are only a handful of producers, and these guys here are one of the originals. They've been around since the 1400s. So what say we taste these? It's about time. Let's taste them, and we'll talk about the different styles as well. You know what time it is. Let's get this party started. So, like port wine, all of these start out as just a regular fermenting wine, and along the way, they add a neutral spirit. That stops the fermentation process and winds up leaving some sugar behind. And that's why we get some degree of sweetness with almost all of Madeira. There are about a dozen different styles of Madeira, but for the sake of simplicity in this video, we're gonna narrow it down to the main four. We have two here today. Ranging from driest to sweetest, we have Cercial. That's even got a little hint of sweetness in it. Here would be something called Verdello. Here's Boal. And that's uh, three out of four on the sweetness level. And then over here would be the most sweet, which is something they call Malmsey. And the last thing I want to talk about before we taste, the names. Where do, where do we get the names for these different levels of sweetness? Uh, they're actually the names of the grapes that go into the bottle. So Cercial is a grape. Boal is a grape. And these are typically blends. So it's not just one wine or one barrel. They take multiple barrels and they blend them all together 
to get an average flavor. So every single one of those, is they're all gonna be the same grape, but they're gonna be different ages. Yes, uh, and when you see the age on the bottle, like this one is, these are both 10 year. Right. That's the youngest wine that's in the blend. So the youngest wine is 10 years, but there could be a 50 or even a 100 year old wine in this blend. And then to complicate matters, there's vintage Madeira, where all the grapes in the wine have to come from the same year. And these are typically the ones that command the highest prices. And that's such a complicated topic, it probably warrants a separate video altogether. So finally, let's taste these damn things. Man, look at that color. It's just like a... Beautiful. It's like liquid honey. And it's like, it's, it's viscous too, like it's got... It, a, definitely, yeah. I mean at 20% alcohol, yeah, it's got some legs on it, and it's got some viscosity to it. Man, if I was like Yogi Bear and I just like right? reached my hand into the pot of honey, that's what it smells like uh, wild forest honey. There's a nuttiness to it. Uh, there's a tropical fruit kind of element there too as well, like uh, pineapples, a little mango as well. Yeah, all right, now give me a taste. And uh, oh, uh, uh, maple syrup. Yes, I was thinking the same. I was. Oh like, my God, it's I like you pour it over like pancakes. I would totally it's just like unctuous. It's like so thick and rich and viscous. But the one thing that really stands out in Madeira is the acidity. The grapes are really high in acidity. As soon as you taste it, yes. you feel that thing on the sides of your tongue and your mouth starts to like, you get that salivation thing going, yeah. And that is the characteristic of these grapes that makes this wine so long lived. You can buy bottles of Madeira that are 200 years old and they're still drinkable. That's incredible. There's a, there's a company out there called the Rare Wine Company in California. And there's another one called the Madeira Wine Company and, and they're located in Madeira. And they sell wines that are 200 years old. Incredible. Yeah. We can't afford it. No, no, they're like <laughs> they're like $3,000 a bottle, but I would love to do it just once. Right. We're going to move to the next one. We're gonna try the Boal, which would be uh, number three out of four in sweetness. Hmm, church bells in the background there. Well, first of all, the color, Dark, a lot more right? caramelized. Yeah, it's a little more brown. Ooh, what is that? Oh my God, it's almost like, um, it almost smells like tapenade to me or like olive oil, like olives. Yeah, it's got a funk to it. Yep, yep. <laughs> wow, yeah, definitely more like um, saccharin sweet. It's got a slipperiness to it too. Like if you drink it, you might notice there's like an oiliness right, right. on your lips. More viscous than the other, right? Yeah, it makes your lips slippery. We have church bells going in the background here and uh, it, this is making me think of church, but I was trying to figure it out. You called it out. I think it's like, there's like a paraffin wax. Yeah, it's like kind a, of got like, like a candle, candle wax. Yeah, which also puts you in mind of a, like almost like a Christmas type setting or something along those lines. Yeah, really. I mean, I, I said it a couple of weeks ago when I was tasting these for the first time. This reminds me of like yeah. like a bakery around the holidays. Yeah, It's like marzipan, like almond, walnut, a little spice, like cinnamon, honey, um, brown sugar, definitely. Oh, just make my mouth water. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's why these are so amazing. And it's a shame that most people kind of don't know these exist or they overlook them. Uh, because there's so much to explore here, these these wines. So food pairings. Let's talk about food pairings. So what are we thinking? Sweet or savory? What do you think? You could do both. That's uh, the beauty of a, a versatile wine like this. You can either do like or opposites. So sweet and savory. I would go cheeses first and foremost. You know, like cheese plate or cheese dessert plate with like uh, almonds and walnuts and honey and like uh, blue cheese, Roquefort, that kind of thing. Now, what do you do if you were going to go like dessert-ish? Mm -hmm. What do you do to not go too sweet? On you don't want to go too sweet because together these two things would be cloying. Right, right, right. So you want to kind of like uh, like a cheesecake that's not overly sweet would be good. Right. Uh, I'm also thinking like uh, pastries too, like hamantash and like rugelach, uh, yeah. where you can have like baked apples or like some little cinnamon spice in there would be really good too. Well, on top of that. Barbecue might actually be really cool. I, you know what? It's so funny you say that because yeah, think about it. When you get the, 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 the you know, that that sweet and hot. Yeah, like something with like a dry rub, like spicy, like ribs. And lastly, let's talk about the price of these wines because there is a pretty wide range. For most everyday drinkers, we're talking about something that's three to five years old. Expect to pay anywhere from fifteen to twenty dollars a bottle. Now, once you start getting into the older wines, something with a little age on them, like ten years. You're talking anywhere from $30 to $50 a bottle. For something 15 to 20 years, expect to pay $75 to $100 a bottle. 
And lastly, we mentioned that you can buy anything from 50 to 150 years old, but be sure of it, you're going to pay top dollar. So I know that it was a lot to take in, but hopefully that gets you started on your journey into the world of Madeira. If you find that these videos are helpful to you and really getting you turned on to the world of wine, then be sure to subscribe to my channel so that you get more videos like this. And if you have any further questions, be sure to leave them below this video and I'll do my best to answer them. Thanks so much for drinking with me today. Cheers, everybody.